How are we doing tonight? How's everybody? It's good to be here with you guys tonight. I'm so, so excited to be here. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Scotty and I am one of the four summer staffers with you this summer. So all summer long, we're talking about image, right? We're talking about how we are created in God's image and how we are supposed to, called to, reflect that image to the world, right? We are called as Christians to reflect God's character to a world that has no idea who he is, what he's about, what he's like. So it's our job to reflect God's character to the world, to be an image bearer for Christ. So last week, not last week, but the last time we were together, we talked about love, right? That's one of the biggest, most important aspects of God's character. Who God is is God's love. And we talked about how God loved us so much that he acted in love by sending his son, Jesus, to die in our place on the cross so that we might be with him forever, right? And we talked about how love is an action. It's something that we do for the people that are around us. So tonight, we're going to be talking about God's goodness and about how God is good and we can be good like God. So the dictionary defines good. I looked it up on the interwebs. It defines good as something beneficial or advantageous to someone or something. So good is something that we do that benefits somebody else. It's, it, it helps somebody else. It's an advantage for somebody else, right? In other words, it's giving up ourselves for the sake of others. It's kind of like love, but it, it's an outpouring of ourselves for others, right? So good is something that right at the beginning of the Bible, we find out all about how God, how God is good. In the first chapter of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, we learn right off the bat that, that God is good. And in Genesis 1, chap, uh, verse 1, 1 verse 3 through 4. Goodness, I can't talk. It says, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. So as God's creating the world, he makes this light, and he says it's good. And he does that with the whole rest of the thing. Like when he's creating the world, everything is good. He makes the oceans, those are good. He makes the animals, they're good. He makes the people, they're very good. It's all good. And then at the end, at the end of the week, at the end of the creation story, when God um, looks out on the world in Genesis 1.31, it says, Then God looked all over he had made, all over everything that he had made, and he saw that it was very good. So God formed the earth. He formed his creation, and he said that it was good. Creation, you see, it's an expression of God's goodness, right? It's something that we can look at around us, and we see how good God is because of the goodness of of his creation. God is like an artist. How many of you guys are artists? It's really dark. I can't see any of you. I'm sorry. Artists, we got some artists over here? All right, awesome. Love it. I'm not an artist. Not at all. I can't paint anything. I can't draw anything. I can draw stick figures and that's about it. Not very good. Clayton, are you a good artist? No. Anyways. Well, but what I can do is I can like build stuff. You know, if I have an instruction book, I can build some stuff. So for Christmas this last year, I made my dad a cornhole board set, right? And it's the coolest thing you've ever seen in your life. Look at that. Go Cubs Go. I made that. Thank you. Thank you. I made that by myself with, with the help of, of somebody who actually knew what he was doing. You know, I, they, I, I helped build it. But I built that, right? And this, this thing that I made, it's an expression of, of, of me, right? Because it's, it's, it's pouring out something that I love, that I care very deeply about. It, it's, it's me, right? It's cornhole boards, but, but that's, that's me. I love the Cubs, man. I'm pouring out my love for the Cubs on, this, on these cornhole boards. And I'm pouring in the same way. I'm pouring out this love that I have for my dad who I'm making it for. And that's all art really is. It's an expression of ourselves, an outpouring of who we are onto this, this in this case, this cornhole board, but a, but a canvas, whatever it might be. It's the same thing with music, right? Young Stallion, he's not here tonight, but he's an artist with music. He makes his own music, his SoundCloud music. Check him out at Young Gaff, right? It's a bop. He bops. And when, when he makes his music, he's pouring himself, pouring out who he is into these lyrics, into these beats. I don't know how music works, but, but art, art and music, they're expressions 
of, of who we are. And creation is an expression of who God is. It's an expression of God's goodness. Right? So when we look around the creation, we can see all over the place how good God is. We see the light, and that's awesome. We can't see without the light. And there's, there's nighttime where we get to sleep, and hallelujah for sleep, man. I didn't get any of that at CDYC, but that's a, that's a good thing. We look around and we see God's goodness in creation. Creation reveals God's goodness to us. That's why when all was said and done with creation, when God was done creating the world, when he created the light and the, and the animals and the waters and the people, he said that it was very good. Now, one of my favorite parts about the whole creation story is the very first thing that gets created, and it's light. Light is awesome. I love light. It says in verses 3 through 4, Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. Now, it's interesting to me, at least, and you guys are going to be like, Scotty, duh. That's obvious. But it's interesting to me that light was created first, right? Because you can't have anything else without the light. You can't see anything, right? So it wouldn't matter if you made the best thing ever, but it couldn't, if you can't see it, what does it matter? Like light right now, look at it. I can't hardly see any of you because it's dark in here, right? If, I turn, if these lights were off, well, I, I'd probably see better because these overhead lights. But, but if we went upstairs to the gym, right, and we walked through the gym with the lights off, you can't see anything. You're walking into stuff. When I take my laundry, I have to take my laundry over to the gym so that I can do it. And I walk into the church, and if I go through the gym and it's dark, I can't see anything. I walk into chairs. I knock stuff over. I hit those weird wall things that they got down the middle because there's no light. You can't see anything without light. So it might seem obvious. Oh, yeah, duh, Scotty. God made light first so that we could see the rest of his creation. But, but light really is the most important thing. It helps us to see the goodness of God. We can't, we, we can't see without light. And all throughout the Bible, light is something that's talked about throughout the whole thing. But it's not always talking just about the sun or about these lights that are shining in my face. He's talking, the light that we're talking about is Jesus. That's what we're called to be, is we're called to be light to the world. To be the light of the world, and that what that is, is just to be like Jesus, right? It's to be an image bearer, be the light of the world, because Jesus is the light of the world. In John chapter 8, verse 12, it says, uh, Jesus is talking to some people, and it says, Jesus spoke to the people once more, and he said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness, because you will have the light that leads to life. And that's what we're called to be, is image bearers, right? Where it says up there, if you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness, right? Because you have this light that leads to life. That's our mission statement. That is our calling as Christians because we live in a world that is super dark, super messed up, super, super shameful. There's a lot of shame. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of suffering. There's a lot, a lot of darkness. So for us to be image bearers is for us to be God's light, be God's goodness for the rest of the world to see. To give up ourselves, remember the definition, it's, it's, doing, it's being something that is beneficial or advantageous to someone else. It's giving up ourselves for the people that are around us, being the light of the world. To witness the rest, to the rest of the world just like Jesus did, right? When God sent Jesus to die in our place, when God gave himself up, Jesus gave himself up on the cross so that we can have a relationship with him and experience his presence forever. Jesus perfectly reflected God's goodness to the world that had no, no idea what he was like. He gave up his life for our benefit, for our advantage, so that we can know him and be with him forever. And if, as we have Jesus living inside of us, we can reflect that light, that goodness to the rest of creation. And it's not just that we have it, it's that Jesus actually calls us, tells us that that's what we're supposed to be doing, right? Being lights of the world. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, Jesus is talking, and it's during this thing called the Sermon on the Mount. I don't know if you've ever heard about that, but it's, it's Jesus, he's sitting on a mountain. Mm, sermon on the Mountain. Mm, yeah, nod. Yep, this means yes, this means no, this means I'm hungry. Yep, you with me? Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is on a mountain talking to people, and this is what he's saying. He's, start, he's starting to teach his disciples how they can be image bearers to a dark, lost world 
world. And in chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, it says, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. We are all called to be like Jesus, to reveal God, who God is, to the rest of the world. Image. We are to bear God's image to the world, like a city on a hill. Think about cities on a hill. Why do they put a city on a hill, right? Why is Jesus, why is that the metaphor he's going for? It's because when you put a city on a hill, it's way up high so that people can see it. They can see what's going on there, and they can see that that city is right there, and it's different than everything else that's going on. You know, it's on a hill, so everything going on down here, you can see that that's nothing, but you can see, you can look up, and you can see the city on the hill amidst everything else, amongst all the other things that are going on. You can see up a city on a hill, and that's what it means to be an image bearer. It's to be set apart, to be different from the rest of the the world. So when people look at you and when they look at me, they can see that something's different about that guy. Something's different. He's bald, you know. Something's different about him. No, it's it's we're image bearers. We show that we are different. They want they look at us, some people look at us and they see Jesus. They see someone that is like Jesus in a world that is not like Jesus at all. That's God no Jesus. We need help. This world is bad. But in all, at the end of the verse, the way that we do this is stated in, in verse 16. It says, let your good deeds, let the things you do, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. That's what it means. That's the calling right there. That's what we're supposed to do. Let our good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise the heavenly father. Good deeds, doing good things for the people around us. Our call as image bearers is to be good. How many of you, when you were dropped off at the babysitter, when you were a little kid, what did your parents say when they left? Mine told me to be good. Hey, Scotty, you're staying with your grandma. Be good. And they didn't mean, when they said that, they don't mean do this, 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 and this, this, and then you'll be good. No, they mean represent me well. Scotty, represent me well to your grandma, to this 16 year old that is watching you. Be good, represent me and your dad well. And that's what God is calling us as image bearers to do is to represent God well. Represent God well. And the way we do that, there's a, there's a lot of different ways we do that, but mostly it's just by generously giving. Giving ourselves, giving up our time, giving our, our money, our kindness, our attitudes, our actions, everything that we do, just giving, giving, giving to the world for their benefit, for their advantage. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. These things up here, they look, they, you know, it's just some words. With our time, I'm really bad at giving up my time. I'm pretty, pretty selfish with my time. I got a lot of things that I want to do, and then... You know, I have to have to make some wiggle room. That's something that I really struggle with. And it's interesting because like I do that, I think I'm on like a tight schedule. I've got a lot of stuff to do before this time. But when you think about Jesus, right? Jesus knew exactly when it was gonna be over. Like Jesus knew the whole thing. He knew every single day, he knew what he had, and he made time for everybody else. So me sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, I've got so I've got I've got nothing but time. Are you kidding me? I got the whole, I got my whole life and I'm worried about my timeline when Jesus knew when it was all going to end, but he still made time. He still gave up his time for everybody else. Just a thought. But Jesus was always giving his time and an easy way for us to give up our time, I'm going to hear some practical application for is this, these next few Saturdays. When we're going to serve our community around us, giving up our time is, is it's super, like it's a built-in opportunity for you guys and me to be able to give up our time for people so that everybody around us can see, around our community can see God's goodness in GSM. 
to be Jesus with skin on for people that really need it. So this, this next few Saturdays, this Saturday, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, the 17th, we're going over to the Cedars. And we're going we're gonna to serve the people there. And I invite you guys, I encourage you guys to come out with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. But we're going to serve and we're going to get to show God's goodness, who God is to the rest of the world. Another thing that we can do as Christians is, is be good and, and generously give with our money, right? I don't have a whole lot of money. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a broke, 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 like five brokes college student. I have got no money. Please, please give me money to help. I need food tonight. Somebody pay for my Culver's. I have no money. But God calls us to be generous with that, right? And, and the thing about it is that everything we have, God has given to us. God has given, given it to us. And he will continue to be faithful. So if you think you don't got a lot of money, God's going to continue to provide for you, to care for you. Pastor C said something one time that really, really was a kick in the pants for me. But he said, what you spend your money on is what you really care about, what really, really matters to you. And that, like, to me, that was like, whoa, way to just kick me on down, my guy. That was tough. But giving, giving with our money is, is, is incredible, and God calls us to do it. And lastly, the last thing that we, we can give generously is, is with our attitudes, right? We can give goodness, be beneficial and good to the people around us with our attitudes. Because a lot of the times... People in this world are really kind of rude and annoying and mean, and I just don't want to really be nice to you because you upset me today. But that's not what God calls us to do, right? God calls us to be good, to be loving, to be gracious, to be compassionate to those people, especially those people, right? Anybody can be good to their friends. But it takes, it takes somebody who's being led by the Spirit to love the people around you despite our feelings because all these things guys love goodness they're not they're not feelings right they're choices i know i might not feel love for for somebody but i'm going to choose to act lovingly towards them because that's what it really means to be an image bearer and guys all this stuff i'm not gonna lie to you it's really difficult to do all the time right it's really hard to be generous with with all my time with all my money and with all my attitude a lot of the times but Jesus knows that. God knows that. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, Paul writes, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone. So what Paul is saying here is that even though it's really hard to be good, we are living for something that is greater than ourselves. I'm not living my life for Scotty, right? I'm living for Christ, I'm trying to. You know, I'm not perfect. I don't do it. I don't do it well every day, but we're not living for ourselves. We are living for Christ. We are living to bear God's image to the world. And when we're weary, what we need to do, like when it gets tough and when it's weary at the end, like Paul says, well, let's not get tired of doing it. When it gets when it gets tiring, what we do is we look around and we reflect on God's goodness, right? We fill ourselves with all the good things that God has done. We look around creation and we see, oh my gosh, it's the light. Lights are awesome. Love the light. God is good. It's plugging back into the Bible and saying, oh God, this is where you have shown, this is where you have shown historically your goodness and you have continued to show that to me to remind yourself of, of, of that. It's praying, God, give me, give me grace, give me, give me peace plugging back into Jesus to be refilled so that we can give more of ourselves to people around. You can't give what you don't have. So that's my challenge for you guys this week. As you go out, go your separate ways, go hang out. As, you're not in school. That was almost a dumb sentence. But as you go out to where you are, the people around you, your friends, your family, be good. Give yourself to those people with your, with your time, with your attitudes. Be image bearers for Christ. Just like Jesus did. Just like Jesus did for you and for me on the cross. Guys, let's pray. God, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for these students. And God, thank you for this place where we can just come and worship you and talk about you and get to know you. God, I pray that as we go from this place, 
that you would help us to be good. Help us to reflect your goodness to the world and help us to be selfless with our time, with our money, with our attitudes. Help us to be you. God, we love you. In your name, man.